Good morning and welcome to those of you in the building and those of you watching at home. I am Bernice. I am Lydia. I'm Matilda. I'm Esther. And I'm Judith. <laughs> we have put the service together and we appreciate that you're taking part in the service with us. And good morning from me as well. I'm Sue. Um, and I'm curate here for those who are watching at home and those who don't know who I am. I must say that um, Andrew, Catherine and myself, we have had great fun putting this service together with the youth and they have put their heart and soul into it. So we're really excited for what they're, they're going to be doing with us this morning. And we'd also like to welcome Ollie, who's visiting, who's going to be grilled by the youth with different questions and then is going to um, enlighten us on our Bible passage. <laughs> Medium rare, yeah. <laughs> he has seen the questions, so there's no surprises, I don't think. <laughs> but we are so excited that you're here with us this morning. So, let us make a joyful noise, singing glory to God, offering glorious praise, and let us say to our God, how awesome are your deeds. Holy is your name. Amen. All right, Matilda is going to come and introduce what we're doing next. Hello. Um, you should have been given um, a bingo sheet as you walked in this morning and some pens. There should be pens around you. So this isn't like, like, like normal bingo we all know. Um, you can see there are questions on it. You have people born in the same month as you. So what you have to do is that you have five minutes to find someone that like fits those like questions on that on that sheet. So you can find someone that speaks another language, someone that plays a musical instrument. You have five minutes to find um, someone that fits it. So have fun. Great. Oh, there are spare pens. Give me a wave. And if you haven't got a bingo sheet as well, give us a wave. And we, we are encouraging you to get up and walk about if you can. Find somebody that's not at your table. One more minute to finish up, just one more minute. <laughs> right, if you'd like to come and sit down and take your places again, please. I know you're having great fun. <laughs> and I'll invite Lydia, who's going to use this one. So Lydia's going to come around and see if anybody's got any exciting answers. So can you just put your hand up if you have anything interesting that you'd like to share, please? Anyone? Okay, Margaret. Grace, Grace and I celebrate the 8th of March together. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? I bet you didn't know this. Um, your father's born on the same day as me. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Lynn is born on se se September the 7th, as me, same as me. Has anybody found any for the other questions? I was interested in the last question, and I put Darren down be uh, because of his sermon the other week. But then I put another answer, and it is everyone, yeah. with an exclamation <laughs> mark, I hope. <laughs> anybody else? Okay, I think that's it. Thank you for sharing, everyone. It 
It was very hard to find people who liked pineapple on their pizza. I think that was an interesting observation, okay? There weren't many, they were thin on the ground. Not many. Claire, you obviously didn't speak to enough people because there's plenty of us. <laughs> we have taste. <laughs> We're going to sing now. We're going to sing a song called Waymaker, which is uh, one that was made quite famous during lockdown. Um, all of our songs this morning have been chosen by the youth, and they're all on YouTube, so they should be quite easy to follow along with. So please do stand with us for Waymaker. is who he is indeed. Please be seated. <laughs> so thinking about the words from Waymaker, 
I invite you to join me with the words in bold here. Thank you, God, that you made this wonderful world. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you sent Jesus to set us free. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that your spirit helps us to do what's right. Thank you, God. Amen. Birthdays. Has anybody got a birthday coming up in the next week or have had a birthday? I know there's some. When's that? On the 6th. Grandson on the 6th. Paul and Darren. Oh, when's your birthday? Yesterday, birthday yesterday. Laura's on Friday. Laura's on Friday. It's a busy month, yes. Grandson when? The 1st. My goodness, it's a really busy month, July, isn't it? And to celebrate the occasion, Andrew is debuting. Happy birthday! <laughs> it's the first time he's played it. No pressure, Andrew. <laughs> no pressure. Over to you. <laughs> birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. home and you're celebrating a birthday that's for you too hope you have had or will have a really great day let's do notices quickly have I got any notices on the screen no okay so um, just a reminder we have a work party coming up on the 16th of July which is a Saturday we're going to start Brighton early at 8 30 I think Kay put in the newsletter for breakfast whatever that may be bacon butties um, there are plenty of jobs to be done, and if you can only come for a little time during the morning, you know, more hands make light work, or whatever the saying is. So it would be great if we can get as many people as possible along just to do all the jobs. There are little jobs, there are big jobs, there are easy jobs, and there are hard jobs. There's something for everybody. All right. So we come now to what we call our Barnabas slot, and I believe the youth have stuff to share with us. So I'm going to take the mic to them. Who's going first? Who's got something to say thank you for? I know Judith has. Let's go to Judith. I finished my GCC successfully. And I think we can all join together in praying for good results for her. Yes, what she wants. I'm coming over this way because I think there's something. Which one of you are going to share it? Um, well, the week before last week, um, we had our work experience and honestly, we're so grateful for the opportunity to work at St. Mary's. It was very, very fun and honestly, we thank God and we thank Andrew, Catherine, we thank everyone here because, like, I mean, it wouldn't have been possible without you guys, so thank you too. Um, yeah, I guess that's what we want to say. Anybody else? No? So for those of you at home who couldn't see that, the first one was Judith that was sharing with her her exam results, and the second one, that was Matilda and Esther, who did the work experience. Right. Over to you, Ollie, to be grilled by the youth. <laughs> and Andrew, and over to the youth. I'm going to go and sit down now. Um, first, we're going to show uh, um, Ollie. Come here. Let's introduce Ollie. For those of you who don't know, Ollie um, is the director of Cambly Youth for Christ, which is part of a larger organisation, which is Youth for Christ. But we're going to show you a short video of um, an event that's happening this summer that four of our young people are going to, and it's called Satellite. Um, and um, so, sit back, watch. It's at Peterborough, and here we go. Everyone puts something at the center of their world. 
Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your job or your education or the sports team you love. But for many of us, the thing at the center of our lives is us. Our world revolves around us, our needs, our wants, what we can buy, how far we can get, and it's exhausting. But that's not how it was ever meant to be. In the Bible, Jesus says that I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Jesus said that the fullest version of life imaginable is found not by filling up our lives with busyness and stuff, but by knowing him. Life makes most sense when we center it on God. And here's the amazing thing. When we put God first, all those other things, our jobs, our families, our ambitions, and everything else we care about, all fit into place. God wants to be part of all those things and more because he loves us and he wants to know every part of us. He designed us to spend our lives in orbit around him. He made us to be satellites. We are satellites. So, if the young people want to come up with the questions, but just as we, um, <coughs> satellites, Ollie, what is it? What are they going to expect to get from it? And how many people are you taking? Great, wonderful. So it's satellites, uh, well, first of all, it's going to be out of this world. Sorry for terrible pun there. I am a father, so uh, I can do terrible puns. Um, it's a Christian youth festival uh, over the uh, summer holidays. And it's going to be taking place at Peterborough Showground. And uh, basically, it's thousands of young people across the UK um, coming to worship Jesus. Um, and as kind of what the satellite strap line is, is, is encouraging young people to, to put God in the center of their universe as a satellite orbit, orbits around Earth. We want to put God in the center, and so we're satellites. Um, there's going to be camping, which uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but there'll be camping. There'll be late nights. There'll be sports venues dance venues there is food vans there is uh, thousands of young people going as before and when I was a young person I used to go to something called Soul Survivor uh, which has stopped now and this is kind of like sprung up out of uh, uh, Soul Survivor stopping and what the things I used to love is um, sometimes going uh, being a young person and being in school and being a Christian actually you can feel quite lonely and you can feel like actually everyone's against you but when you go to a festival when there are thousands of young people all worshiping Jesus all singing the same songs and, and praising his name actually it lifts your faith and makes you feel not alone but that you're part of a family and part in something bigger um so yeah so we're um i'm so pleased because uh, at the moment i am taking these the, the four girls which is wonderful i'm hoping to maybe have a few more that might join us but we're going to be going with other youth groups from around this area um so there's a church in farnborough that we're going with as well and also Frimley baptist church uh, and St. Paul's Church as well. So uh, we're, we're going as individual groups coming together from this local area, camping together, having lots of fun. So yeah, it should be fantastic. And I'm really excited to take these girls. <laughs> Brilliant. Over to you. How did you become a Christian? What age were you? Okay, so I became, I was brought up in a Christian home. Um, so both my parents uh, went to church and they encouraged me to go to church at a very young age. And uh, to, to be honest, um, I absolutely loved church growing up. It was a fantastic place. I had my best friends at church. Um, so yes, I, I had a really good kind of church experience. But if you're asking me, when did I become a Christian? And that is asking, when did I take ownership of my faith? My faith shouldn't be based on what my parents believe, but what I believe. And it wasn't until I was 13 years old and I was at a, uh, it was a church camp that we did and um, the youth leader talked about grace that I'd not heard before, uh, about God's love and how it can be given to anyone and that no matter the sins that we've done, we are forgiven um, as long as we accept Jesus into our lives and declare him as Lord and Savior. So I did that when I was 13 and then I got baptized as well as a public, as a public declaration to my church family as well as my friends as well who came along. Um, so yes, that's kind of how I became a Christian really, like that. Okay, so yes, so as the director of Camelie for Christ, I am a youth worker as well as the director of the, the charity. And I've been doing youth work now, employed youth work for um, 
over 10 years. So before I became the director of Camberley Youth for Christ, I was the youth worker at St. John the Baptist Church in Windlesham. Um, and uh, you can probably tell that I'm not from around this area. I've got a northern twang. I am from Sheffield originally. Um, and um, my parents did used to live down here many years ago before I was born. Um, and we had family friends down here. And it was kind of through that, really, that I, that I got the job in Windlesham. Um, and um, it was some, um, some amazing, not coincidences, but I guess God's coincidences as, as, as we believe that God has a plan for us and um, it was through that that I moved down to this area when I was 23 years, 23 years old um, and now yes I'm, I'm over 30 um, and have a child down here and, and, and have stayed in this area and I was at that church uh, St John's for six years um, and I absolutely loved it and yeah it was definitely um, I didn't plan to become a youth worker I always loved doing youth work, had lots of voluntary experience. My degree's in PE, um, but there are some transfer transferable skills of PE in into youth work. Um, but yeah, God had a plan for me to, to encourage young people in their faith, and here I am. There you go. <laughs> Next question. Not to interfere with your like, personal life, but how did you meet your wife? Yeah. And when did you... Purpose to Okay, so yes, so I am um, married and I got married on, oh gosh, I need to remember this date, the 17th of April 2017. <laughs> Can I remember that one? And uh, I met my wife through an online Christian dating website. <laughs> yes, I know, how modern, how modern. So, uh, well, round of applause for that. It wasn't Tinder, I'll tell you that, it wasn't Tinder. Um, so, um, when I moved to this area and the church that I worked for, um, there weren't many people my age and so, and I was ready to, to meet someone, to start dating. And uh, I actually went, um, my parents actually live in Scotland now, it's an absolute pain to get home, but yeah, they moved to Scotland. Uh, they, they do love me, they, they weren't moving away because they don't love me. Um, and um, I remember traveling up to Scotland and um, I was on the train and then I sat next to this really nice girl. I thought, oh yeah, this girl is very nice, very pretty. And uh, we started talking and uh, we had a really nice long journey all the way up to Scotland. And then we decided to go for a date in, in London and uh, we went for a date and the date was great, you know, we had a nice meal, it was really nice, lovely flowing conversation, but there was definitely something missing and the thing that was missing was actually the faith element, she didn't believe in Jesus or Christianity and I think for me, I wanted my partner, my future wife, to hold some of the beliefs that I, that I believe in, um, so it was that moment that I decided, you know what, I'm going to sign up for a Christian dating website, I was kind of always against the idea of trying to meet someone online, I thought, I could do it organically in person, um, but yeah, no, I, I decided to go on a Christian dating website and then I met my wife through that and it was the best decision I think I ever made. And uh, yes, I, so you asked about my proposing as well. Um, so um, the church that I worked for, St. John's, um, is, uh, it's a beautiful church as, as most of the churches are. And um, it's very beautiful in, can, in candlelight. So um, at the time I got my youth group to uh, light the whole of the church up in, in not, not burn the church, to light up the church in, in, in candles. Um, I had some, they had some supervision as well. And um, yeah, the church is all looking very pretty. And then um, I blindfolded my, I, I made an excuse saying, um, oh, I think someone's left the light on in church and I've been asked if I can go turn it off. Uh, Cause when, you, when you're the youth worker of the church, you get lots of other odd jobs as well. And uh, my wife's like, oh, why are they making you do that? Can't like a church warden go and do that? So I was like, no, come on, let's go, let's go do that. And so, um, I got to the church and then I, I put a blindfold on her and then walked to the middle of the aisle and then had some music, one of our favorite songs playing. And then we walked down the aisle together in the, in the candle lights and then I then proposed to her. Um, so yeah, and then, and then um, my wife really loves uh, Paris and uh, the original plan was to propose in Paris. But I thought that would just, I don't know, I think I'd just be nervous the whole trip. So I decided to pr propose before and then we went to Paris. So there you go. I'm not romantic like that all the time, <laughs> but there you go. And uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was lovely. Uh, have there been any moments in your faith when you felt discouraged and how did you overcome them and get back to God? Yeah, so um, now I told you that when I became a Christian, I was 13 years old. And I'd love to say that actually from that moment, my, my, my Christian walk, my Christian faith has been plain sailing. But if I told you that, actually that wouldn't be the truth. 
There's been times in my life where I've found my faith pretty hard. There have been obstacles to overcome. And um, as I mentioned, I've got a degree in, in PE. And uh, so I, uh, I went to university uh, in Leeds and uh, I got really uh, probably too much into the culture of sport and drinking and partying. And uh, I, I probably didn't lead the most Christian life. And I probably describe myself as a, as a, a plastic Christian in that probably my faith was quite brittle. Um, and also, um, I was saying one thing, but maybe not do, doing a different thing. Um, so it wasn't until my second year at uni that I kind of like looked myself in the mirror and, you know, if I say that I'm a Christian, then, then surely I should be trying to live like a Christian and, and be a witness to my friends. Um, so it was there that I kind of decided to, come on now, let's, let's um, stop getting involved in all these different things that you're getting involved with that, that's maybe not good for your faith. So yeah, it was, it was during that, that sec, kind of second year at uni. And one of the things that really helped me was having um, friends who, who, who believe in, in Jesus, believe in the same thing as me. And when I got to uni, um, I did find a church, but it was such a massive church that I could go and then leave rather than being part of the, the, the church community. And uh, I kind of alienated myself. And I heard this fantastic metaphor around faith, that faith grow. If you imagine like a, a fire with coals, and uh, if we're, we're the coals, that the fire stays, long, uh, stays burning for longer if we're, we're, we're together. But if you take a coal out on its own, it will get cold really quickly. And that's what it was like for my faith. I kind of alienated myself on my own. I wasn't around uh, a Christian community where we were rubbing shoulders with each other, talking about faith, praise, praying for each other. I didn't do any of that. And, and my faith kind of, it didn't ever die out. Um, but it was uh, not burning as bright. And so that was the obstacle that I overcame and um, ended up embedded myself into a church and had great Christian friends. And um, yeah, I guess that's kind of part of my journey there of overcoming. Uh, what do you do in your free time? Oh, good question. Uh, okay, so um, before I became a father, because uh, I have a daughter who is six months, uh, she's very, very cute, although uh, I have to say last night she was a bit of a pickle. I did not get much sleep and I was up again very early this morning. I think, I had, I think I've had like four hours sleep or something like that. Um, uh, but before I became a dad, I was really into running. Um, so I, I've run a, a, fair, a fair bit. I love sport. Uh, as, you know, you know, my degree's in PE, so I do love sport. I love football. I play every Tuesday uh, with friends. Um, I've also started playing a bit of basketball as well. I really enjoy badminton. Um, what else do I like to do? I love watching like films and, and Netflix series, and um, I like a bit of gaming here and there, but you never get any time for that when you're a father. Um, and I also enjoy um, like digital design stuff, so a bit of social media content kind of creation, and yeah, making videos and doing that type of stuff. Um. So, we like talking to you, we like, like, you, we actually love talking to you. Oh, that's when we, great. Like, when we heard, <laughs> Thank when you. We heard, like, Ollie was coming, we're like, Ollie's coming. Yay. Like, oh, thank you, Miss And I feel like we're not the only ones, a lot of, like, youths love you. So, I was, like, wondering, like, are there any tips you can give, like, adults that are, like, not, because I feel like you relate more to us more because of, like, your age, you're closer to us and, like, the age gap. But I was wondering, can you give, like, the adults any, like, tips on how to work with teenagers, youths? Of course. So, um, Matilda, you, you set that question up really nicely, that actually sometimes when you're a little bit younger, it is easier to relate with young people. So, I guess I do have that in my in my pocket um, when it comes to a tip for working with young people. However, let me tell you a story. So I work in local secondary schools and um, there was a phrase that came out that I did not know the understanding of it. Netflix and chill. I won't explain what it is. Netflix and chill. I'm sure they, they know what it means. Uh, it's, a bit of, it's a bit of a rude saying and I didn't know it. I, I was completely naive to this saying and I was doing some youth work with some young people uh, at school doing detached youth work, meet, meeting them at, at, at break time. And uh, we started talking and we ended up talking about Netflix. And I was like, I love Netflix, absolutely love it. And they went, oh, what Ollie, like Netflix and chill. 
And I went, Netflix and chill? I love Netflix and chill. I do it all the time. It's amazing. And they just like, as the girls are laughing now, they started to absolutely laugh. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Netflix and chill means, it basically means you watch Netflix and then you have sex with your partner. That's what it means. I did not know that. Um, and so I, I was there and, and they absolutely laughed. And you know what? This kind of taught me a valuable lesson that I don't have to try and be like the young people. I, sh I should be authentically myself. Um, and I think that is true for everyone. Um, I don't think young people need uh, adults in their life to know exactly what the, the latest phrases are or, uh, or what, um, you know, completely up to date with youth culture. That stuff does help, it, it, it does, but you don't need to do that. I think if you can be yourself, and take an interest in young people, asking them how their day is, showing that you care for them, that you love them, um, and also um, that, you, that you love God as well. If you can show those things to young people, then that is a great place to start in doing any type of youth work. So I guess be yourself, be open, ask questions. Um, I love young people teaching me about youth culture. So, you know, what does that mean? Or, oh, how, you know, how are things going on at school? Or, you know, asking, um, um, yeah, open-ended questions. That's how you can do good youth work. Impressions. Impressions, right, okay. Okay, what impressions can you do? What impressions can I do? Okay, so the reason why Matilda asked this question is because really embarrassingly, um, I lead a youth service called The Point, and um, for some reason, I like to think that I'm really good at doing a hoverboard impression, um, and I told everyone, then everyone, everyone uh, joined the server was like, go on Ollie, do your hoverboard impression. And I went to do it and I just could not do it. And like, I literally tried for about like 10 minutes and it was just really embarrassing. So this is why I think they're asking me to do this. So I might try now to do the hoverboard impression. If it fails, I'll maybe try and do a different impression. So, um, right, imagine the hoverboard, okay? If you want to close your eyes, you can, you know, you can see someone on the hoverboard and, and this is the sound that it makes. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> Thank you very much. There you go, hoverboard. Um, I can do like Kermit the Frog. I can do Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, welcome. It's uh, Kermit the Frog here. Um, oh, oh, ladies, that is wonderful, dear. Oh, Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, isn't this a lovely church? Oh, isn't it wonderful, dears? Oh, I absolutely love your laugh, Sue, or it brings a tear of joy to my eye. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Doubtfire, dear. <laughs> I'm glad you're not wearing the, uh, the costumes either. <laughs> so we're going to stand and uh, worship again, and uh, then we're going to hear, um, we're going to listen to a story that's going to take us into the next part of our time together. So... Is the dancing happening to this as well? Okay, so it all comes on the screen. Every move I make. Let us stand.
subscribe. <laughs> so you definitely get your exercise here, don't you? But I don't think I have quite as much energy as they do. <laughs> so we're coming to our Bible reading now. Um, this is a, um, one of Debu of the youth who are going to lead us in our Bible reading. So I need all the youth. A man named Lazarus, who lived in Bethany, was ill. Bethany was the town where Mary and her sister Martha lived. This Mary was the one who poured the perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. The sister sent Jesus a message. Lord, your dear friend is ill. When Jesus heard it, he said, The final result of this illness will not be the death of Lazarus. This means this has happened in order to bring glory to God and will be the means by which the Son of God will receive glory. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet, when he received the news that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days. Then he said to the disciples, Let us go back to Judea. Judea. Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I will go and wake him up. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been buried four days before. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you have been here, Lord, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask him for. Your brother will rise to life. I know he will rise, he would rise to life on the last day. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. I do believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come who has come into the world. After Martha said this, she went back and called her sister Mary privately. The teacher is here and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up and hurried out to meet him. The people who were in the house with Mary, comforting her, followed her when they saw her get up and hurry out. They thought that she was going to great to the grave to weep there. Mary arrived where Jesus was, and as soon as she saw him, she fell at his feet. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus saw her weeping, and he saw how the people who were with her were weeping also. His heart was touched, and he was deeply moved. Where have you buried him? Come, Come and see, Lord. Lord. Jesus wept. The people said, See how much he loved him. But some of them said, He gave sight to the blind man, didn't he? Could he not have kept Lazarus from dying? Deeply moved once more, Jesus went to the tomb, which was a cave with a stone placed at the entrance. Take the stone away. There will be a bad smell, Lord. He's been buried for four days. Didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believed? They took the stone away. Jesus lo looked up and said, I thank you, Father, that you listen to me. I know that you always listen to me, but I will say this for the sake of the people here, so they will believe that you sent me. Lazarus, come out. He came out. <laughs> he came out, his hands and feet wrapped in grave clothes and with a cloth around his face. Jesus told them. Um, untie him and let him go. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you so much. It's good to hear the word, different voices, and to see it as well. I was going to join me here. I, I, I'm going to ask him some questions differently. We're going to think about the passage. But I just wanted to set Camp the Youth for Christ in the bigger picture of Youth for Christ. What is the work that is happening in our nation uh, towards young people? And we've got a clip to show you now. We are about change, not just any change, but generational transformation. Gen Z, the iGen, or the digital generation, a generation that's connected daily, yet 
a generation that views social media as the most negative influence on their lives. The planet is more populated than it has ever been. And yet, it is likely that this is the loneliest generation this planet has ever known. This is a generation that cares. They want to make their families proud. They want to achieve something that matters. They want to become a better person. To help others. But this is also a generation that has stopped believing. Only 32% of young people believe in God. The majority either don't know, don't care, or don't believe. For this generation to see change, it needs change. And we are about seeing young people's lives changed by Jesus. We are about taking good news relevantly to every young person. We don't believe we should stay in our buildings. We believe we are called to go. We believe we are called to rethink how things are done. We believe the time has come to change the landscape. We believe young people matter. We are Youth for Christ. We are about seeing young people's lives changed by Jesus. Will you help us see a generation changed? You get that one. Yeah. I get this one. I'm going to take it off. I hear for me showing that was really important because as a church here, part of us um, I guess Satellite said it, it talked about putting God at the centre. Mm. And we have, with the church, whole Church of England, have committed to be um, Christ-centred and Jesus-shaped. And we also, as part of our longing, is to, to grow younger, mm. as well as more diverse, though I think we're fairly diverse here. <laughs> um, but it's that commitment, as we've just heard there, mm that we believe that Jesus is still relevant for our young people. And, um, and a God-centered, a Christ-centered life makes a difference. So we've just heard a Bible reading this morning. Mm. And I kind of want to, how do you read the Bible? How do you engage with the Bible? Um, for some of us, we've been taught, read it every day. We have our own methods. But for so often, people will have it on the shelf. It's the most, it's the, the best-selling book mm. and yet it lives on many people's shelves how do you engage with it mm. how do you read it mm. thank you Andrew um, I guess like uh, first of all it's the what's my attitude towards the Bible is it a book or is it the Word of God uh, for me it is it's the the Word of God to, to hear God's voice and maybe we ask ourselves a question as well how how do I hear God well we hear it through his Bible um, through what he's given us. So I guess, first of all, it's what's my attitude, and, and that's my attitude there. So my why is sorted, but the, the how is the question of how do I read my Bible? And, and for me, I, I read my Bible every day. And um, the way that I do that is I keep it simple. I keep it, I keep it uh, clear in my head of, of, of when I'm going to do it. Um, and I, I just try and stick to those. So for me, um, keeping it simple. So First of all, willpower is not the best thing to rely on in the world. And motivation isn't. It's, it's a scale. It, you can either be really motivated or actually sometimes you just can't be bothered. And so you need to make sure that your entry point to whatever the behavior is, and it's reading the Bible, is really easy. So for me, um, I read my Bible on my phone. And on my phone, I use the YouVersion Bible app. And on there, every day, it has the verse of the day. So when I literally can't be bothered, my energy is completely depleted, maybe I just don't feel like reading my Bible, I can read the verse of the day. It will take me 10 seconds. Now, sometimes that's all I need to get started. 
Because sometimes we can see the mountain. Like uh, some people set these goals of I'm going to read my Bible for an hour, two hours every single morning, every single day. And you know what? That's, that's quite a lofty goal. Fantastic if you can do that every day. But sometimes there'll be days when you just don't feel like it. So what is your entry point? Um, for me, I keep it really simple. Verse of the day. Now, I'm also very clear of when I do this. So when do I read my Bible? So I set something called a habit implementation. So I know exactly when and where I'm going to read my Bible. So before I had my daughter, I used to read my Bible whilst I have my breakfast. So when I eat my breakfast, I will eat my Bible. Uh, not eat my Bible, read my Bible. <laughs> I will read my Bible. So I'm very clear of, of, of when I'm going to do it. Now I have my, my, my daughter and what I've had to change is, is that actually I read my Bible whilst I am feeding my daughter because uh, I have her every morning uh, just to give my wife a bit of a break because she has her for the rest of the day. Um, and so when I am uh, giving my daughter her bottle in the morning, I will read my Bible. So I know exactly when. Now you can do this in any you know, part of your in your day. So it could be before I go to bed, I will read my Bible or before I take a shower or, you know, or when I have my breakfast, I will read my Bible. If you've got an idea of when, you're more likely to do it. Um, so being really clear of that as well. Now for me, um, I, I, I try to push myself to read more than verse a day. I use Bible plans, which you can have on version Bible app. Um, so I'm going through the Bible in one year. And you know what? It's going to be the Bible in probably a year and a half. Uh, and that's okay. You know, I'm not going to beat myself up. I'm still reading the Bible through the verse of the day. Um, but I do try and read a Psalm or a proverb, New Testament and Old Testament. But I use the Bible plan app on my phone. So yes, I guess that's how I try and read my Bible for me. Uh, it's all about the why and then I figured out my, my how as well. So the why is you're going to hear God through his word. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, if we're honest, sometimes that's obvious and sometimes that is not obvious. Mm. And then, but the, the when is you're talking about habit, making yeah. it, finding that time. So you eat your breakfast, therefore to Put reading the Bible, eating your breakfast makes it a habit yep. and therefore becomes a normal, natural thing yep. rather than think, do I have to think about it? Yeah. Oh, I've not done it. Yeah. Another good tip as well, if you prefer to read at night, then when hopefully you'll make your bed in the morning, place your Bible on your pillow so it's really obvious. So when you go to bed, my Bible's right there. What I'm going to do with it, I'm going to read it. I do that with my, I don't, I don't. I do that with a book that I'm reading. Every time I make the bed in the morning, my book is on my pillow, so it's obvious for me to do that habit. So we've got a passage here. There were 44 verses. And so on a scene, we've had the conversation what we're going to talk about today. My best thing when I'm ever reading a, a larger chunk of the Bible is say, what one thing mm. leaps out to me? One thing. So keep it simple. One thing. So from the story that we've heard today, what one thing stands out for you? I'm sorry, Andrew, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to do two things. So I think the two things are, is that in this Bible passage, we see Jesus' full humanity, but then also his full divinity as well as him being God and human. So uh, the human part is through the, uh, his friendship with Lazarus. He was my friend. Uh, sorry, I've written down notes on my phone. Um, it also said that Jesus loved, uh, loved him and his family. It said that he was deeply moved and troubled by his death human side right there uh, and in the short the shortest verse in the bible um, we have it in here jesus wept my rs teacher used to say that all the time jesus wept shortest bible verse it's not swearing uh right there um and so yeah we see jesus hum hum humane his human side through his response to lazarus um which is great uh, but then also we believe that jesus is god as well there's a hundred percent human but he's also a hundred percent god um and we see that through him resurrecting Lazarus from the dead. Um, and I loved the little drama sketch. I was not expecting that. That was great. <laughs> Might have been like a bit like a zombie, but I was fantastic. <laughs> that was really good. So, yeah, so I, I think that's for me. Jesus sh just showing who he is, his human side, but then also that he is the son of God. So the one point, Jesus shows who he is, but two aspects of that one point. He's fully human, yeah. but fully divine. Now, that's great. When we read the Bible, you have the thought. It's great. It's on there. But how do you translate that? So it's Sunday, Monday morning, back to work. Hmm. 
How does that get? How can you land that? So how can we apply that? That's a word to make it relevant to our Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the rest of the week. So taking that one thought, how are you going to work that out? How can you encourage us to work it out? Yep. So I'm going to focus in on um, Jesus showing his divine self um, through the resurrection of Lazarus. So I'm going to concentrate on, on resurrection. And I think for us as Christians, we are like Lazarus in that Lazarus came back from the dead through Jesus Christ. No other way was he brought back to life. It was through Jesus. And, and that, for me, is the message of, of Christianity, that Christianity is pointless without the resurrection. It is, it, it, everything pins on Jesus coming back to life because that's where life is. I know there's a contradiction there. There's an oxymoron of, of death and life, but it, it's so true. And there's so many Bible verses that talks about Jesus being the bread of life, that he gives us life um, and he gives us life to the full. So for me, the focus is, is that we are, we need to believe that we are like Lazarus, that, that although that we are dead to our sins, maybe not dead physically, but dead in our sins, that we will be brought back to life through Jesus dying on the cross. Um, so I guess that's for me is the, the message that we should take into our Mondays, knowing and believing uh, that any wrong that you have done is fully forgiven by Jesus, that the mistakes we make, um, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Um, and it's Jesus that brings us back into eternal life. And, and just one last kind of story to share. I'm, I'm sorry, I love to waffle on. Um, but my, um, my grandma, she was a, a very strong Christian lady. She, was, she uh, used to live in Nigeria for a bit as a, as a missionary there. And um, yeah, she was, she was amazing. And I remember the day that she was told that she was dying. So she was told that she was riddled with cancer. She was 87 at the time. So, you know, it, it wasn't that much of a shock. Um, but I remember uh, the moment she used to live in a, in, a, in a Christian home and her friend came through the door, opened the door. Margarita, that was her name. Margarita, you are dying. Hallelujah. And I remember thinking, who are you to say that my granny dying is, is good news? How is this good news? I'm going to lose my granny. I absolutely love her. But then we remember that actually, what is, what is the hope that we have in Jesus? Well, the hope is that we are brought into eternity with God, that we are, we are taken to heaven, that it's believing in Jesus gives us that, that ticket. And so, you know, my granny, you know, she had a lot of pain when she died as, as, as that happens, but I know that she's in a better place where there's no more, no more tears. <laughs> yeah. and, and I think we heard a story a couple of weeks ago um, that if we go on our Monday knowing that no matter what we've done wrong, Jesus has taken us, our sins away, that resurrection from death to life. I guess the bit I would want to push us a bit further in is that we're good news. Um, Joan, who is a member of the church, shared a story. She went to a party mm. and uh, probably in, she was in a state of year one of your university. And uh, anyway, the conversation at this party was uh, with a man who then told her her life story and that it was a mess. And it just started because she said she went to church. And then she began to share her faith. And I, I guess that, that we forget that there are many people who are feeling so lost and that we need to just say, have you ever considered this Jesus? The one who I met turned my life around mm -hmm. and made a difference mm -hmm. and tell our story that actually if we're living testament to the Jesus, that we once were dead but now alive in Christ. Mm. Maybe we forget that. And that listening to people's stories, that actually they're just longing for us to say, can I introduce you to the guy? My life, mm. year one university, year two, I, I turned it round. Mm. Or Jesus turned it I made a decision. Mm. I sometimes think we make this far too complicated, mm. that actually, as people tell their stories to us, it's just listening with the spirit and just say, can I tell you something? We're gonna to listen to a, a, a song. The next two songs, uh, we're gonna to turn to Christ again. We're gonna pray, but uh, Matilda, you chose this song. It's called Human Condition. It's not one I knew, but the lyrics of this are stunning and the, and the following song. So Matilda, do you want to come and tell us why you chose this song?
and we're going to sit and listen to it and reflect on, on what we've been thinking together about the scripture. Um, sometime, um, sometime in my life, like a couple of years back, about two years back, during the pandemic, like right before the pandemic, um, something happened with me. And I actually felt very, very alone in my faith. I felt very, very alone. But I stumbled upon this song along with my best friend. And we sat down, thought about the lyrics very well. Because we're not perfect. We didn't, were teenagers. We did a lot of, like, like we, we did a lot of things. We, we, like, we just wanted to, like, explore stuff. And then, like, seeing how it started, like, it's, we are, with this song, we acknowledge that we're not perfect. We, we have, like, we try to fit in. And we just cry out to God that like, it should help us. It's a prayer to God. Just help me. Help me to be what you want me to be, not what human beings want me to be. Um, so that's why I chose this song. I don't know. Okay, let's listen to it. Thank you, Matilda. Take my confidence and put it on like armor. Five foot nine, so I try to stand a little taller. To measure up, I gotta work a little harder. It's the human condition. I do it all to make it perfect for the picture. Pretty smile, let me find the perfect filter. If they believe it, maybe I believe it with them. That's the human condition. Lord, help me. I'm so tired of pretending. I can hold it together. When I know that I can't Lord show me I don't have to be worthy It's because of your mercy You love me You love me just as I am And a cross that was too heavy My jaded heart's a one aware it needed saving You could have turned, could have run Could have left me in my, my human condition And if I'm really being honest Every day I struggle with the promise That all I am is all you ever wanted Ever wanted So we're going to pray. We're going to turn to the God who loves us. The words will come up on the screen. So let's take a moment, Jeff. Think anything that's particularly 
in our mind at the moment on our conscience that we want to bring before Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. And so we pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong in my life. Please forgive me. I now turn from everything that I know is wrong. Thank you that you died on the cross for me so that I could be forgiven and set free. Thank you that you offer me forgiveness and the gift of your spirit. I now receive that gift. Please come into my life by your Holy Spirit to be with me forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Take a moment of stillness. As God does that through Jesus, by the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you that as we just wait in your presence, that you will take away sin, that you'll take away the stains and the fears, the things that are very real to us, and replace them with your love and your peace. Thank you, Lord, that when we encounter you, we're not left the same, but we're washed clean, forgiven, Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are here, the resurrection and the life. Amen. Amen. We're just going to listen to part of a song, So Will I. <laughs> God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath. The planets form, and if the stars amaze the worship, so light, I can see your heart in it. Every burning star signal fire grace And if creation sings your praises so
and Sue as we lead us in our time of prayer. Today we'll be praying differently. Today, we'll, uh, <clears throat> sorry. Today we'll be play and praying differently. So as James 5.16b says, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that we may be healed. So we are going to pray for everyone around us, in our front, our back, our right, our left. We're going to turn to them, pray for them. As the song is, um, is praying, we'll pray for the people around us. We're going to play the song Oceans while we're praying for those around us. If you don't want to pray out loud for those around you, don't worry. You can pray in silence.
together in the in the words that Jesus taught his disciples to say all those years ago our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen there will be prayer ministry available after the service if you feel that there's anything that you'd like praying for i think chris is on prayer ministry not sure who's with rosie chris and rosie um, come and find them if you need prayer for anything and if you've been praying for somebody during this time and you've been given some words to share with them Please do share it with them after the service as well. Andrew and Ollie. So you have words in yellow to say. Over to Ollie. Where there is conflict, let there be peace. Where there is fearfulness, let there be peace. Where there is anger, let there be peace. Where there is violence, let there be peace may god's peace rest on our homes and all who live in them amen amen and now just with arms open let's receive a blessing from god lord we have learnt much this morning as we go from this place may we be resurrection life to those we meet Fill us again with your Holy Spirit, we pray. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. 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 Lydia. Thank you all for being with us today. We really loved creating the service for you over the past few weeks. Please enjoy the tea and coffee at the back, and we have also got some fruit punch. Please be welcome to come to the lunch after the service and enjoy our last song, I Know Who I Am. Yeah, I think before, before we listen to that last song, I think the youth do deserve a really big round of applause. <laughs> While you're listening to the song, do feel free as well if you're desperate to go or you're ready for tea and coffee, help yourself. We are the chosen